Good evening. I went to the IWD Brisbane Meandering Conference in March this year, and I wrote and presented a um, somewhat mediocre speech where I mentioned that I was one of five women organising the Let Women Speak Tour of New Zealand. In that speech, I said that we needed Kelly J. We needed to inject some energy into the New Zealand gender critical movement, and that my hope was that this would be a game changer for New Zealand TERFs. My hopes were realised. The Auckland event ended in a riot before any woman was able to say a single word, and the Wellington event had to be cancelled because, as Kelly J's own website said, uh, of a credible threat to life. It was at that moment that it became apparent to everyone that New Zealand women are disrespected, victimised and remain unheard. Spectators were horrified while watching a bunch of predominantly male trans activists, young ones, screaming, abusing, insulting, harassing, threatening and ultimately physically assaulting women for having the temerity to speak in public. I spoke on the platform briefly a couple of days after the event and mentioned that one woman had told me she had written a poem and she wanted to read that poem out at the event and that we got beaten up for wanting to do that. I challenge anyone to see the justice in that. There's been significant support given and received within the gender critical movement and I am personally grateful for the kindness I received and I'm indebted to a number of women and I hope they know who they are. The work and effort that has gone into the subsequent legal initiatives, the pooling together of resources and the sense of unity that has resulted from Albert Park has been incredibly moving at times. The riot opened eyes for a lot of people, and there has been um, a, a substantial growth in numbers in most of the gender critical groups. There's been breakthroughs in media with publications of articles, letters, and interviews in mainstream media, which was severely lacking before the events. New groups have been created involving both men and women, and they are growing rapidly. We're building a strong foundation for the work ahead. And there's been the ultimate question asked of our Prime Minister, what is a woman? Which led to a stuttering, bashful, bullshit answer in line with other countries' leaders' answers. And it tells us all we need to know. It's not a surprise that people have opposing views. It's not a surprise that gender critical views are at, at best misunderstood, at worst a justification for rape and death threats. It's not a surprise that society has created a perfect storm of ideology that panders instead of challenges, oppresses instead of uplifts. But what is a surprise where the buy-in is situated? Some people don't know the ideas or the layers. Some people don't care. And some people are lacking a depth of knowledge but are still actively engaged on either side of the debate. Of the debate. And, of course, some people are at the epicentre. In terms of the type of people who support gender ideology or who are gender critical, we're looking at a range of demographics. We're looking at a range of life experiences. People who would have historically been on the same side are now on opposing teams. We have parents debating children, teachers debating students, women debating women, feminist against feminist, lesbian against lesbian, gay against lesbian friend against friend, and worse, we have gender critical against gender critical, because when human beings feel disenfranchised and disrespected, sometimes they resort to eating their own. So in these instances, we have risk of harm caused by friendly fire, attacks from your own side. We see this played out on Twitter and Facebook all the time. Not, it's not uncommon. I've been in it myself, I haven't won particularly, but I've been in it. As part of the organising of Posey Parker, we had criticism from other gender-critical feminists around the suitability of supporting Posey, around disagreement of her stance, her particular take, which is fairly hard line. There were even some feminists who agreed that she shouldn't have been allowed in the country. After the event in Auckland, our own people started criticising. 
criticising the organisers' abilities, the organisers' actions, and attach blame to the way it had played out. Subsequent weeks showed an undercurrent of bitching and backstabbing, generally demonstrated out of personal grudges and hurt egos. Although I'm strongly of the opinion that some people need to be held to account for their behaviour and attitude, doing so in public and on the net is grandstanding and ultimately self-sabotaging. Friendly fire was evident in my employment. People I thought were my friends were not. People I thought had professional respect for me did not. People who are legally required to ensure I am supported dropped the ball. Just a couple of weeks prior to the Auckland event, one of my work colleagues got her nose out of joint about what I was organising, had a bit of a go about Nazis and bigotry, and then stopped talking to me. She has still not started talking to me again. I took sick leave for a week after the Auckland event because I incurred injuries there, and when I returned to work, some of my work equipment had been damaged while locked away in my personal office. The same day, I was called into a meeting where it was implied that there had been a complaint made about me regarding the gender-critical stuff that has since been retracted. Um, an email trail followed, which resulted in me making a formal response outlining the ways that I felt I was working in a hostile environment. These issues haven't been addressed to date. The consequences of the events were personal as well for me. Uh, my tertiary was exposed beyond what it had already been. Um, I've never been particularly shy about it, but I tried hard not to labour a point when talking to friends and acquaintances when I felt too much resistance or when I knew they actively did not share my views. The Albert Park events brought it out into the open and people I knew struggled with it. I've seen resistance to my stance from friends who aren't involved in this. There's a, there's a female socialisation aspect where, whereby they tolerate my beliefs, accept that they're there, but ultimately blame the victim. There's judgment that I was involved in this, and this is what the consequences were, and therefore, in a way, it's my fault because I was involved. What came out of Albert Park for me was a sense of betrayal that, that evoked rage. I've worked with the police force in previous jobs. I've considered them on my side when I needed them. They supported my work in court. I've called them when I got caught up in difficult situations. I've sought assistance from them when I've been offended against, and I've never felt as though I could not trust them to do their job, at least with some attempt at professionalism. And I'm speaking um, as an organisation here, individual police officers, um, obviously a problem can be problematic, um, but as an organisation, that's what I expected. When the police failed in their responsibility to attend and keep the peace as they required, and as they told us they would, and they effectively left a bunch of mostly older women utterly at the mercy of a violent crowd who were intent on causing harm, they betrayed all of New Zealand. They chose not to do their job. They chose not to do it. And really, that is the epitome of a friendly fire. We have a significant battle ahead of us. Chanel Lau, for example, who stirred up vitriol and organised the trans activists at Albert, Albert Park, has been rewarded with Young New Zealander of the Year and recently is the face for an anti-bullying campaign, which is laughable and an absolute slap in the face. The media are continuing to walk the narrative push the propaganda. Groups are being formed and discussions are being had. People are out on the streets. Leaflets are being dropped. Signs are being painted. MPs are being contacted. Letters are being written. Articles are being published. Lawyers are being instructed. Ballot boxes will be ticked. The women are organising. And we need to stay on track, keep the common goal ahead of us and stay in our respective lanes. I have a renewed commitment to this fight. We have a long way to go, but we're well on our way. I've said it before, that if you're not with me, you're against me. And if you're against me, you're no damn good to me. So my path is clear for me. I know what I need to do. I know how I'll do it. And I, all I ask is that those who are against me get out of my way because I've got work to do. I may well get taken down again. And I may not be able to get back up next time. But I do assure everyone that I will, will not get taken down by friendly fire. 